Ryan Wilson here from Authority of FX. We're gonna show you how to make a Proton Stream. First thing you need to do is go to our website and download our OTL, which is a Houdini digital asset. Open up Houdini, go to File, Install Digital Asset Library, navigate to where you saved it, accept, hit Tab over here in the Object Explorer, the Parameter View, type Proton Stream, drop it in. Now you've got a Proton Stream. All you have to do is go up to the shelf, click the Curve tool, draw in a curve, any shape you want, hide it, click on the Proton Stream, select it as your stream guide, and there you go. Instant Proton Stream. I have it on preview mode right now. It basically just hides all the particle effects. They're slow to calculate, so by default I have it on preview. All you have to do when you want to render is just uncheck that. And I'll do a quick preview here. And there you go. Lightning bursts down the stream. Now I'll show you how to use this thing. So you've seen what this does. Now let's look at the dampen object. That's if you're trying to catch a ghost. Let's just make a sphere. That'll represent our ghost. And let's say... Show our guide curve. So if we have the sphere right up close to our guide curve. When you add the proton stream effect, eventually it'll probably clip it, like right there. Now we don't want that to happen. So all you need to do is go on the dampening object slot, click your ghost geometry, and that'll dampen the noise in that area so it won't clip the geometry. Uh, the threshold distance is a distance modifier for how far away it affects the stream. Default values are good for that. End dampening is exactly what you might think. When it's at zero, the end just flaps around like a garden hose. And when it's at one, it's locked into wherever the end point of the curve is. I usually have that at 0.5. It's the curve itself is made of two different uh, types of noise. The first is a spiral and the second is just a, a noise. So I'll show you how those work. So I turn down the wave amplitude here so you can just see the spiral. Let me just get rid of that sphere. So I'll hit play and you can see it's, it's just a nice spiral that flows down the curve. And you can adjust all those parameters. You can turn up the spiral radius. You can t tighten it up. This frequency is how many turns per the length of the curve and the speed is how quickly it flows down the curve. Now I'll turn the spiral amplitude down. All you have to do is turn the radius down. Now the wave is the noise. So that flows down like that. That looks great, but when you look at it straight on, it, it doesn't have much happening. From the side, it looks awesome. But looking straight down, it's pretty boring. And that's why I added the spiraling. So if you turn up the spiral a little bit here, see now you're starting to get some some interesting an interesting look to it. You can you can see those spirals happening. And it looks good from the top still as well. Now for the waves, we have frequency. speed at which it propagates down the stream. So I'll hit play. I usually just leave that at seven. And we've got stream thickness. Thickness fall off. That has to do with how quickly it goes from the end of the gun uh, to its full stream thickness. Minimum thickness. So that'll be the minimum thickness at the gun and stream length, so you can animate the stream turning on. Now for the plasma, uh, also known as lightning, that's what flows down the stream. The way that works is you need to have it preview mode turned off. Go to the first frame, hit play, and you'll see the plasma being emitted. Let me just turn down the stream thickness so we can see this a little bit better. There we go. Now it spirals around the, the stream itself. And this is 
uh, akin to what Ghostbusters 1 looks like. So I uh, did a really good job of, of having it spiral all the way around. Uh, you have full control over this as well. Now, if you want it to spiral tighter, uh, all you need to do is turn down the spiral radius. If you want it to have bigger spirals away from the, the central curve, turn that distance up. The spiral frequency is how many wraps uh, there are per length of the stream. So the lower this number, the fewer times it'll wrap around. You can see it goes further now before it wraps. That's a good angle to look at it from. And if you turn that up, say to five, uh, they'll be extremely tight. There you go. So again, I worked it out so the defaults are, are a good number to use. Uh, the birth rate is how many lightning or how many plasma bolts will be spawned. Birth rate, length modifier, and length variance all have to do with the uh, frequency of emission of the plasma bolts, their length, and how each one varies in length. Plasma speed is how quickly each piece of plasma will go down the length of the curve. And the noise amplitude has to do with the fine detail noise that makes it look like lightning. I'll just hit play so we can get a plasma bolt to look at. So I'll turn down the noise amplitude to zero and you'll see it's just a smooth spiral. So if you turn up the noise amplitude, you, you start, it starts to look like lightning. Again, the defaults are good here. You can adjust the frequency, the roughness, and the render thickness. The bursts are the little white hot glows that flow down the stream. You can see one right there. Uh, for that, there's just two controls. There's just burst rate and burst speed. And then there's three exports. This is just for your information. They don't do anything. Uh, on the Mantra node, you can actually export these as render passes. So you can export the stream, the plasma, and the burst as mats. So you can use them in compositing. Now let's take a look at how we might catch a ghost in some advanced stream animation.